Gulf Travel Show presents an exclusive panel discussion on re-engineering travel moderated by travel influencer Namratha Rose. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Gulf Travel Show 2020, the first ever virtually hosted by us program in the Middle East. I'm Namratha Rose and I'm the moderator for today's panel discussion on re-engineering travel. I would now request the panelists to briefly introduce yourselves to our audience, starting with Ms. Beverly from Singapore. Hi everyone, I am Beverly and I head the Middle East office for Singapore Tourism Board here. So what we cover is the GCC, of course. I've uh, been in, with the board for over 10, 10 years now. So, but I'm new to Dubai, so that's me. Shall we have Mr. Sharon now? Hello everybody. I'm Sharin. Basically, I'm based in uh, Dubai. I'm looking after the Middle East market, Africa and uh, Pakistan. And um, I've been too long in the tourism industry. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sharin. And now we have Mr. Christos from Cyprus Tourism. Hello, hi everybody. I am Christos Dimitriou, and I'm the director of I'm the director, the regional director of the Deputy Ministry of Tourism of the Republic of Cyprus, and I'm based in Dubai. I've been in Dubai for two years, but I've been in the uh, ministry for more than 12 years now. Thank you, Mr. Christos. Once again, a hearty welcome to all the panelists. So without further ado, let's start with our discussion for today. As we all know, the COVID-19 has taken everybody in the tourism industry by surprise because it has killed people, caused the world to pause, and disrupted everything we do globally. It is impossible to predict how long it will last, what conditions will be required for lifting restrictions, how many waves it will entail, and what will be required for the operational and strategic requirements of the new realities. Our industry has been hit. We have faced many things before, and I'm sure we will overcome this one as well. Now is the time to brace the future and we would ignite, refocus, redesign, and re-engineer our global tourism industry. So I would like to start off with the first question for today. What, in your opinion, are the areas we need to focus to retain the travel trades trust? Let's start with Beverly. Well, it has indeed been a very challenging time for our industry. And uh, I think right now, what we want to focus on, really, we've been focusing on this, but what we want to drive a little bit more now is a digital innovation and implementing of these safety measures, right? This will then help to instill some confidence in people or in travelers when they come to the country. Right. What would Mr. Chevron say to that? I agree with, uh, you know, we have to look into the digital, you know, improve our digital uh, medium. But uh, for us, uh, we also look into the, uh, you know, to build the trust, we have to look into the future business with our partners. And then, of course, in terms of, you know, uh, training, the human resource training. So that's why we are, look, we are, you know, like sharing the leads with them and then doing online seminars. And then we're also planning for, you know, like when the borders is open, we are sending the travel agent to do the fam trip and then, you know, restart again our uh, campaign with them. This is our plan. So uh, I hope, you know, everything will go well. Thank you. Absolutely. Because being a travel agent myself, I know it is important that we have the trust with the tourism boards, the trade partners and the agents to refocus and reignite what we had before. So, Mr. Christos, how would you like to support? Yes. Um, for, uh, for us, uh, COVID uh, taught us a, a, a huge lesson. Well, before COVID, the, the tendencies, the behavior of the traveler um, was about to, to uh, be shifted. We realized that um, travelers need more uh, exclusive or um, targeted vacation. So 
now with the COVID um, lockdown and uh, all the time that we have to reconsider and rework on our strategies, we realized that yes, we were at the uh, um, uh, right direction. So we will be concentrating on more um, segmented um, groups of people. And I'm talking about the people who want uh, to go on a longer stay vacations to a destination, uh, the people who want to do luxury vacation, uh, isolated uh, vacation, they want to go on vacation to meet the place and stay for good 15 days. So um, there was a bad um, um, side of the uh, pandemic, but there is also, I believe, we believe at the Deputy Ministry of Tourism, that there will be um, a, 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 the other side that will help us to um, focus and be concentrated on those specific target groups. Absolutely. So that is what we are all hoping and wishing for. So what do you think the consumers, I wouldn't want to term it as new consumers, I would say the consumers are looking for right now, like the priorities have changed for many. For some it is safety, for some it is hygiene, social distancing, exclusivity. What in your opinion are these consumers looking for? Beverly? Well, there is a fundamental shift. I mean, people are a lot more concerned nowadays with the hygiene and health, as you rightfully pointed out. And I think uh, beyond that is also about um, the quarantine that's going to happen when they travel, you know, the tests that they can do, um, those emergency cases in case they, you know, something happens in the country that they're visiting, what's going to happen. I think these are very real concerns that people do bear in mind nowadays. Uh, and perennial questions that keep coming to us, right? What, what happens if I go there, you know, if, if, if something comes up? I think this one alone does shift uh, the way people start to decide on where to go. And they are also looking, I think, a lot more on insurance nowadays. I think a lot of people are really looking at, okay, does my travel insurance cover? What, what does it cover? And stuff like that. And I think the demand for travel advisors are also coming back. So... Sure. At, for a brief moment, we were a bit worried about the traditional uh, travel agents, right? But I think now uh, it really does have a very critical role to play in advising people as they want to or as they consider destinations to travel to. Absolutely. Like it is always good to have someone trusted and reliable to ask for an advice or to guide you rather than have your advices coming from a phone or a laptop or an iPad, but with a click of a button. As much as technology is advanced, I think that human touch still remains intact. And this has shown. What about you, Mr. Sharin? What do you think other consumers looking for during these times? I totally agree with Beverly on... Uh, uh, Mr. Insurance. Sharin, you're on mute again. Okay. Uh, you, now can you hear me? I uh, move on to Mr. Christos. We'll take Mr. I agree with Beverly. Safety and hygiene is number one. It's the first, it's the priority of the, of the new client, let's say. Uh, and it will be for the next maybe two, three, four years. Um, when we first opened the borders back in June in Cyprus, we have um, uh, created our protocol and we have, um, the government has decided that whoever wanted to come to Cyprus, if a problem occurred during their stay, we gave them a, a significant number of arrivals during the summer period. But the problem was when they were returning back to their countries, that they have to stay in, um, in quarantine for seven days or 14 days. So, but we are very optimistic. We believe that, well, with the recent news yesterday from Pfizer, 
we are very optimistic that soon in the uh, the longest in the beginning of 2021 we're going to have the vaccine ready so people will get back to their uh, new well not new normal normal but with different settings, let's say. Uh, so we believe that um, um, they will start traveling again. They will be start smiling and traveling again. They will, of course, be very careful. They will be asking for uh, the hygiene uh, protocols. Uh, they want to. They will want to feel safe. Um, so we will take care of that and also give them the extra additive, not only the sun and sea, but more when they come to Cyprus. I don't know if I asked your question, maybe I um, concentrated on uh, the after COVID, uh, the, the, the closed the after COVID period, but- You, you did touch the you point, did, did. but yes. you explained a little more. No yes, worries. a little more, Just thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, can you hear me now? Okay, uh, basically, uh, I totally agree with uh, Beverly on the uh, insurance, travel insurance, because I think that is the most important thing. And then, uh, because now, basically, uh, you know, people are looking for safe travel, and then uh, they need to know the, uh, basically, a very clear SOP for each country because you know like now everybody is coming up and change, changes in the SOP is like making people confused so they, they need a very clear SOP for each country so that you know when we want to travel the travelers they feel much easier so this is the thing that uh, we should emphasize more and then I think travel traveler will be looking for you know like more quiet destination looking for nature that is you know like uh, less uh, people so uh, I think people are going back to nature. Okay, thank you. As Beverly had hi rightly highlighted the importance of travel insurance, as opposed to travel agents and travel advisors, pushing it and trying to convince the travelers, I believe this pandemic has made all travelers understand the value of a proper travel insurance and what it covers. So yes, our next question would be, since a lot of countries are now focusing on the domestic tourism as international tourism is on hold due to the borders closing, do you think it will make our hotels and tour operators in your country freeze or slow down trade partnerships and marketing plans with international buyers? Beverly, would you support that? I don't think they would step down on anything. Uh, I think they would already be, they, they are working very closely with the tourism boards to get themselves ready as well. Uh, granted, okay. it's a little bit different direction and not probably as tactical as we did in the past, but they are not letting up in, in terms of marketing themselves or keeping themselves on top of mind with the travellers that are going to come in the future. All right. Mr. Sharon? Uh, basically, uh, even though now the Malaysian hoteliers and agents are promoting domestic and uh, basically micro tourism in Malaysia because of the current situation, but uh, you know uh, they are eager to be back to the international stage, and uh, you know that's why they are going. You know, a lot of them are going to participate in GTS, and uh, they are keen to meet new potential uh, buyers and you know to renew the you know uh, the uh, their ties with the current partners. This is the thing that uh, I think everybody is looking forward to. Thank you. True. And Mr. Christos? Yes, for us, uh, we have been, since day one of the lockdown and then the first opening and now again, the, we, we, we haven't closed the borders anyway, uh, uh, Cyprus, but we are working very close to the Deputy Ministry of Tourism and the um, and the tourist industry, the tourist uh, stakeholders in Cyprus, were working very close together, and we have we haven't stopped working to reassure the travel agents, the organizers, and um, the rest of the industry abroad, outside Cyprus, um, um, 
to continue or let's say when things are going to be okay to reignite the engine and start again uh, selling the selling their product uh, the selling Cyprus to them so actually I mean nobody stopped working on that direction even though we are promoting the um, interior let's say tourism the, 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 we didn't stop to, to, to our efforts for the, for the other. Thank you. I think, I think the shows, shows like Gulf Travel Show and the webinars and other road shows are helping the trade be in touch with the travel trade very much. And it is also helping all of us to reconnect in some way that we would not have done earlier. So what can you say are the new or now normal lessons learned? Like how would we adapt? Anyone can go for it. First thing that we have learned from the pandemic is that now people will be more, they will be of course traveling. Mm -hmm. Traveling will never stop. People will have the need and the urge to uh, go to new places, experience, uh, things uh, travel let's say, after all but what we have uh, realized is that people now they will be looking forward on vacations that they would it's not going to be that crowded let's say so they will be looking for more alternatives during their traveling outside of their uh, uh, country so that's what I, <coughs> I'm sorry, said in the beginning that we are trying to create um, spin-offs on our product, of, of our Sun and Sea product, in order to accommodate this new need of the new tourist, let's say. Thank you. Beverly, would you like to take on? Sure. Um, I think right now, uh, during this time when a lot of countries were under lockdown and some of them still are, I think it has changed the way people have, are consuming experiences and information as well. And with that, I think we see innovation coming from our trade partners. Our attractions have come up with new ways to engage the consumers. The consumers are now uh, consuming or uh, uh, getting information different sources, different styles, different ways. They start to do a lot more Zoom meetings, for example. They start to do a lot more online uh, virtual tours. Uh, people are coming up with it. And I think that has changed the game a little bit for us, for, for, for the industry as well as for, for the visitors. Uh, the need to and the yearn to want to travel still goes, I think. I do believe there is already that fatigue of being in one place, for sure, but at the same time, I think the way people are starting to experience things are also different. So rightfully, as Christoph said earlier on, uh, less crowded places, but that also means that hey, contactless perhaps, or, or you know, a certain way of buying tickets would have been changed as well, or, or certain things that they do before that is no longer the same. They don't want to physically be there if they don't have to. So stuff, little things like that have changed. Well, little, but not quite little at the end of the day. So this is what I've been observing. Thank you, Beverly. And Mr. Sharon, how would you like to add to that? First thing that I uh, see is that, you know, uh, basically virtual communication and digital technology are becoming more and more essential than before. And then uh, you can see that now, uh, safety and hygiene becomes number one priority for every traveler. And then, uh, but uh, human are fast uh, adapters. So basically, uh, people are now more ready to follow the SOP to make sure that they can stay safe and healthy. And then uh, the other thing, so you can see that, you know, travel industry has uh, adapted very fast because they have, you know, like now they have allowed flexibility in, uh, their, in traveling, uh, in travel plan. Changes can be made uh, for, for bookings and all that. And then other things that, you know, even hotels are introducing uh, contact-free services such as uh, check-in and payment. So, you know, a lot of changes adopt, a lot of, you know, adaptability. But, you know, human can survive. You know, basically life goes on. 
I would like to add uh, one more thing to what uh, um, uh, the other speaker said that this pandemic um, showed us the way to use technology at its fullest. So we will take that technology and implement it on all the new um, proposals that we have for the, for the new normal, let's say. Thank you. Well said. So with that, I know you may not be able to pinpoint and give us a date on when your countries would open if it is shut or when the borders would open. That is absolutely not fair on my side to ask, but would you have a rough idea or would you like, like to add on something what your destination is probably doing right now to prepare for that? Beverly, can we go with you? Well, uh, for Singapore, to be very honest, we are not in a rush. We are taking a very deliberate and multifaceted approach to opening up the countries. So uh, as it is, there are some arrangements with selected countries. So it, it's bilateral and it's also uh, dependent on, on a lot of other factors, right? So do I have an exact date for you? Unfortunately, I don't. I wish I do know, <laughs> but, uh, but not for now. However, it doesn't mean that we're not doing anything or we, we are just sitting here um, we are getting ready for everything. As soon as its announcement comes, we are ready to roll and to, to, to welcome people in. And, and this is going to take a little bit of time, unfortunately. I, I, Absolutely. No, I'm totally with you, Beverly. I mean, uh, borders not opening or not open to travel does not mean that the destination is not ready in any way. I, I, I understand they're taking their own time to be ready and prepared in all ways. Exactly. So, 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 so once travelers. Exactly. So it's, it's more imperative for us to get the basics right, right? To get everything Absolutely. ready in place before we welcome people. Because really, at the end of the day, people will be worried about safety, will be worried about hygiene factors. We really need to get that right. And we cannot afford to not have that in place and ready. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Mr. Sharon, what do you have to say? I wish I have a crystal ball. <laughs> Basically, <yeah. laughs> we're looking uh, at uh, 2021, you know, cross my fingers. But uh, like Beverly says, you know, like uh, we are planning and uh, it depends on the situation of COVID. You know, we are facing the, the third wave now. So uh, as soon as, you know, all things are, you know, in place, uh, our country will be open and uh, we are more than ready to, to receive the tourists. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Christos? Well, on our side, Cyprus uh, is open since the beginning of June. So we have been receiving uh, tourists from uh, many countries. We have categorized the countries. We have made it, we have created a, a, a categorization system, A, B, A, B, and C. A are those countries that we don't request a COVID test, a PCR test uh, uh, before they travel. B is those countries that we request from the tourists to um, have the PCR test uh, taken before they arrive, and C, Categories: those countries that we don't accept, uh, we don't accept people, we don't accept arrivals. So we manage to keep the country open, even with um, uh, a smaller amount of uh, arrivals. Uh, and um, well, okay, now there is the second wave, but uh, if there will be, there will be local lockdowns. So we're not going to close the country again. We're not going to close the island for the arrivals. The only problem is that I mentioned earlier that they would love to come, but when they, re they will return back to their countries, they will have to add another seven, 10 or 14 days 
uh, to their uh, leave of absence, let's say. So that is uh, a negative, um, that is negative towards make, taking the decision to travel. So we are observing things. We are waiting for the good news and uh, we'll see what's gonna happen in the beginning of 2021. Thank you. Absolutely. So with that, we've come to the end of today's discussion. It was wonderful to have you three on board today and hear of your thoughts on how we as a team can work together in bringing about a change in travel and hope our wonderful industry bounces back to its former glory at the earliest. Thank you all of you for being part of this panel discussion and wishing you a wonderful evening. Thank you. <music>